guys, it's your girl Nana, and this is Onana Nation. So if you're new on this channel, a very special welcome to you. Please go ahead and subscribe, honey, because you would definitely love it here. And to all my amazing subscribers, shout out to you guys. You guys already know how much I hurt you all. I appreciate you guys for all the love and support. So today we're going to be doing a continuation of the video we started on Monday. Today we're going to be doing the hottest news from Cameroon part two. So stay tuned as we break this down. All right, so the first topic for today is going to be um, a sad case um, unfortunately it's about this case reaching us from Moliko Boya where we have a young boy he's 29 years old he went to the village in Manfe and got his two junior sisters from his mom those are his two step sisters he got them from his mom he's like mommy I'm now working in Moliko I have a little bit of money I can take my two sisters from the village and come with me to the city I would support them financially and send them to school I mean the village is no place for two young girls now I need to bring them to town so they can have proper education and their mom was like, ah, oh, Heavenly Father, thank you. My son has grown until he wants to take responsibility of his two junior sisters. He wants to help support them and see them through school. Thank you, Jesus. So I am so happy. It's the joy of every mom. So mommy carried the two daughters and gave to their brother. Poor woman, if you be no. She carried her two daughters and gave to the brother. They packed their bags. They followed brother from Manfi. They came to Moliko Boya. So brother works in Moliko and he stays with the two young girls only for him to be doing things to this children at night. One of the children is 12 years old. The other one is 9 years old. When they sleep at night, brother will go to their room and be doing things on their body. And they are like... This is supposed to be a brother. This is uncomfortable. So he graduated from just touching to, you know, he started doing things, real things, to 12-year-old and 9-year-old children. Some of these things I cannot even say on the camera. You can imagine. So these children have been abused reportedly by their brother, like, over and over again. They are crying. They are looking for help. They don't know where to go to. On top of all of that, he's beating them again. Uncle to get anger issues. All his frustrations in this life, he's doing on the two children. When he will go at night and do things with them, he will come during the day and beat them again. So the children are like, this is too much for me to take. And the brother even told the 12 year old one that you are 12 years old, very soon you'll be having your period. If you have your period, come and tell me here. So you can see the devil, he really knows what he's doing to these children. Until he knows very well that he's capable of impregnating his own junior sisters. Ah, the heart of man. Until he told the little 12 year old that if you have your period, come and tell me here. So that maybe he should stop doing it or maybe he should get contraceptives or hi papa god they will know they sleep or they will know they sleep their poor mama is in the village she knows she has sent her children to um town to go to school with their brother in the city mama if you only know what brother is doing to those children if you only knew what he was doing to them so these two girls, they are crying, they're crying, and then they stormed out of the house. They could not take it anymore. It was too much. You know, when you're abusing little children, they cannot find the strength in them to shout and cry at once. Sometimes they will need like months and months of time to build courage in themselves. So the 12 year old told the nine year old like, sis, little sis, we cannot continue living like this. We have to run away from this house. This guy is destroying us and our future. And the nine year old was like, okay, I guess you're right. What are we going to do? We don't know anybody in Boya. We don't know anybody in Moliko. So that's how the two children ran from the house so they ran from their brother's apartment and they were running everywhere anybody they saw on the street they were running helter skelter help us so auntie help us so uncle our brother is doing things to us help us we cannot take it anymore help us so and that's how they met one girl on the streets the girl too had compassion the girl was like you know what i gotta listen to what these kids are saying she stopped what is happening the kids are speaking in pigeon our brother our brother the dude thing for we the first we for night put it in there for our skin the dude thing for our skin we will not like him i don't know what they happen i will not even know how to call him i mean we not even get a number well, brother, will help we help we. So the girl was like, Jesus Christ, this is happening in this Moliko. This very dirty south. Wait till when a brother in name, the children were talking. The girl was writing it down. The girl was like, Wanna be okay if I film on a small video? The children were like, Yes. The girl took out her camera and then she took a video of the children. And now the video has been circulating on WhatsApp groups that people are sharing the video. If you know that poor mama in the village, she had the video. Your children are stranded in Moliko. They are with one girl for now. She's squatting and keeping them. Mommy, come and take your children. No, your brother has, your son has turned different thing in Moliko. He is using his sisters. What than I reach out? So I wait here. I know, no. Everybody has conditions in this world. What than I own condition? They don't go put your hands somewhere. Nobody knows. But it's rather unfortunate that a woman will take her children and send to their brother. You is supposed to be their flesh and blood. You is supposed to protect them against all other guys. A brother is the first protective figure that we ladies have in our lives. My brothers are super protective of me. So much so that even when I was growing up, if a guy just said hello to me, only the eyes that my brother will look at you, you will balance. First of all, my brothers are all tall. I mean, all my, everybody in my family is a giant. So, they'll look at you only one eye, you will balance. Brothers are protective figures. You're supposed to protect your little sisters, not expose them, not do things to them. 
this is crazy so as soon as i receive updates on this case i'm definitely going to come back and give you guys but right now investigations are going on they want to catch the guy i mean he's going to be arrested for sure he's going to go to jail he's going to pay for this crime squarely i cannot wait for them to give him his punishment so that it will serve as a measure of determined other people out there who are you know doing things to people's children you guys should be careful though i keep saying it every day the best person that can take care of your kid is you whether they're in the village with you sleeping 10 of them in one bed is better because you can watch them as a mom whether they're eating but they are roast cocoyam and roast plantain and palm oil and salt is better because it comes from the heart of a mom you will feed your children according to how you want you will clothe them and take care of them you will nurture them with the love and the warmth of a mom these people come and take your kids like give me your kid i'll train them or send them to school and they do things to your kids you don't know and by the way that brings me to my second story the second question today the second topic we have to discuss today is coming from Douala, Cité de la Paix where we have a Presbyterian church pastor Pastor Emmanuel Nda and his wife Mrs Nda they went to the village same story I was telling you guys just a minute ago they are from the northwest region of Cameroon they went to the village they went and got a kid you know many people do this they go and get kids from the village they bring them to town they tell their parents, hey, I'll come and live with your kid, I'll send him to school, I'll train him, and he'll just be helping me, you know, I'm busy, I'm a pastor, my wife is busy, we need somebody at home to help us do the dishes, help us keep the house clean, help us cook and all that stuff. So after selling that beautiful story to this poor woman in the village, the woman gave them her kid, her son, they brought the son to their house, and the son is doing, you know, like a housemaid for them, he's helping them, washing the car, wash, um, cooking for them, cleaning the house and all that stuff. So they've been maltreating this child and all the neighbors know, every day the child will be screaming and crying in the house neighbors know that this woman is beating their child neighbors know that this woman is doing things to this child and you know sometimes in camera neighbors are like well i'm not involved myself in that case it doesn't concern me some neighbors sometimes eh, if you see something say something this is a kid this is a child it could be your child tomorrow if you see something say something so the child is crying every day because they are maltreating the child and you know the child is always suffering the mom is in the village how will you go back to the village i don't know so the child now the woman in the house she lost ninety thousand. 90,000 francs CFA she lost and she just assumed that it was the little boy who stole it. And she went and got the boy like, you stole my money. And the boy is trying to say, auntie, it's not me. Or how will I steal your money? It's not me. She started beating the child, beating the child. She went and boiled hot water, came and poured on this child's body. The child was crying, you know, the water was spilling the child's flesh and everything. The child was shouting like, neighbors were coming in. That's when the neighbors came and picked the child and rushed to the hospital. And the case has gone viral on the internet today. A woman. A mother, a mother figure, you have the heart to do this to another woman's child over alleged 90,000. If your own child, if your own biological child steals 90,000, what will you do? You will speak to the child, you will counsel the child, you put the child down and talk to the child. Stealing is not good. This could land you in very bad places tomorrow. This could land you in jail. This could land you to death. People can stone you to death for stealing. Stealing is not good. You advise your son, you talk to him, and you teach him the way forward. You teach him the Bible, you pray for him, you do everything for your child to change. But because it's not your child, it's somebody else's child. What did you do? You went and boiled water. We care woman, evil woman. And to think you're married to a pastor. Hey, Papa God. Your pastor husband too go and sit on the pulpit every day and be preaching to people. Show love. Love is kind. Love is patient. <laughs> Patience kill you there. Your wife is not kind. Your wife is not patient. Your wife is not understanding. She's doing evil to people's children. And you are seeing it every day. You as a man, you know sometimes when your wife is evil, you know. When your wife is good, you know. So, Oga Pastor, Sango Pastor, every day you're seeing your wife maltreating this child, you're not saying anything. You're seeing your wife beating this child, you're not saying anything. Until your wife went and boiled her water and pour on this child, that's when your eyes open to finally see that you are married to a Jezebel. The woman in your house you could not talk to. As a man, sometimes you see a woman maltreating a child you're like no honey that's not right you're the one you're the voice of reason you're the one to tell her honey that's too much no honey you're exaggerating i mean this child is hard working he has done this he has done that you don't 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 be beating this child all the time you talk to your wife you reason with her you talk sense into her head in case the devil has taken over her you're a devil you pray for her you remember her to god in prayers you talk to your wife like honey i don't like the way you're treating this guy i disagree we got to change we got to do better you did not do any of that and today the case have gone viral on the internet. People are not even calling by the woman's name, or they're calling out by the pastor's name. Pastor Emmanuel Ndao, Presidian Chositila Pe. It's his name that is everywhere today, you see. Maybe if you would have tamed your woman, if you would have kept her in control, if you would have tried to discuss with her that what you're doing to this child is not good, this case would never have reached this level today. She was so used to maltreating the boy that even boiling water and pouring on his body was nothing to her. It was already normal to her. That was her normal. That was pretty routine. 
So people on the internet today are dragging the pastor left, right, and center. How can you do this, a man of God? How can you let this amount of evil happen under your roof? Neighbors are coming out to add more magi and salt. We know that woman. No. We know that woman. She's evil. That woman. Mm, she beats that child every day. Every day that child is crying. You two neighbors, you hear things, you don't see anything. Sometimes you guys have the duty, the good neighbor principle. Call the police. There's a woman here maltreating a child. And let the police come and see now. You can even call anonymous. You don't give your name. Pick a new SIM card from MTN and call. Uh, MTN, no. <laughs> you call. You call the police. Police, so there's a child here that is suffering. You call the gendarme. There's some things you can do sometimes if you see somebody abusing a child. That could happen to anybody. It could be your child tomorrow. So neighbors, we have a duty as well. If we see things, we should say something. If you see something, say something. Especially when it concerns children. They are vulnerable. They cannot protect themselves. So if you see something being done to a child, maybe to an adult, you can be like, okay, that's not my business. They are big. They can handle their business. But to a child, it's your duty. A child is for everybody. It's for all of us. So the next topic is still a sad one. I mean, we have so many sad stories from Cameroon, unfortunately. Um, we have two poisonings again. It looks like the long streak of poisonings in Cameroon is far from being over. More and more people are getting poisoned by the day. So we have this young, beautiful Cameroonian woman. Her name is Linda. She lives in Europe. She has a husband. She has kids. So Linda told her husband, like, honey, I'm going to Cameroon. I mean, I need to unwind. The stress in Europe is too much. The stress in the abroad is too much. Only work, family life, and all those things. It's a lot to drain you. I need some time. I'm going back to Cameroon. I need to relax. The husband was like, okay, honey, you can go. Linda bought her flight. She went to Cameroon. She stays in Douala, in the literal region of Cameroon. Linda went to meet her family. She was unwinding, having the time of her life, having fun with her family and all that stuff. And then she was like, it's time for me to check on some old friends. It's time for me to catch up with my girls, you know, how we used to do back in the day. So Linda started calling her friends, gathered all of them, and they met up somewhere. They were eating, they were drinking, and Linda gave the friends money. It is alleged that she gave them 5000 to all of them, and they were complaining like, you left Europe. So after she gave them the money and she went, her own way they stayed behind to complain like hey sit down one she went all the way to europe she came and gave us five thousand people demo people are wicked out here you don't know the stress this woman is going through in europe you don't know the number of family members she has there in cameroon most bush followers this is the dilemma bush followers face you want to go back to africa you have 100 nephews and nieces you have 100 brothers and sisters you have 100 cousins you have 100 in-laws that so you have to keep things for them how much money do bush followers make with their own bills and all that stress you guys are not being considerate you guys are not being real somebody will come from Europe and give you 5,000 you said the money is small she took you guys out for an evening she sponsored the feeding she bought food for all of you guys she bought drinks for all of you guys do you know how much that cost that was hundreds of thousands she didn't even have to give you guys money most people will buy you drinks buy you food and they say buy you and they go she was kind enough to give all of you guys five 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 thousand all of you that's almost hundreds of thousands she spent in one night and you guys are still not grateful. They sat behind to plan her and you go to Europe after all year, they can't give you 5,000. They call her again, no, this time around the friends organize themselves, they plan evil. They call her like, hey Linda, what's up girl, can you come? Uh, we really enjoyed the time we went out last night, can we hang out again? And Linda was like, sure, why not? So this Linda too, her time to go back to Europe has reached though. Her time to go back to Europe has reached, she called the airlines and you know, um, postponed her flight to cancel the flight and push it forward to another day. So Cameroon was too sweet, or so she thought, until it cost her everything. Cameroon was too sweet, she was enjoying herself, she was chopping life, and then she cancelled her flight, she pushed it forward, called her husband like, babe, I'm not coming now, I'm going to add two more weeks in Cameroon, I mean, Cameroon is sweet, everything is good. And the husband was like, sure honey, unwind, I mean, you need to like, um, relax and you know, distress and everything, and then you come back to Europe. Now, so Auntie prolonged her stay in Cameroon. If you be no poor woman, if you go you back to Europe. Oh. So as her friends know that she's still around, they call her like, Lee, can you come? Let's hang out. And she was like, sure, why not? You guys are my girls. She went and met her girls. This time around, they had already planned something for her. And that's how Linda got poisoned. They poisoned Linda. She went back home and that was it. That was the end of her life. She breathed her last. So we have voice notes from some of Linda's friends where really explaining everything that happened. And the story, I got the story from Better Things. Um, Better Things gives me a lot of stories sometimes. Shout out to you, Clarice. I love her so much. So yeah, this story now, um, Linda's friends in this voice note, I'm going to put it towards the end of this video so you guys can listen. One of Linda's friends in Europe is saying that we should be careful, oh, Linda gave money to these girls and the girls were saying that the money is not enough. People are evil out here. They don't know your stress you're going through in Europe. You give them money, they still judge you on it. And that's how they poison Linda. So this lady is talking in the voice note and saying that people should be careful when they go back home. Hang out with your immediate circle, your tight circle, your family. Because these days, we don't even know who we can trust anymore. Some friends 
clients have become evil and the frustration too people don't have jobs in Cameroon so if they look at you you look like you're a little better off if they look at you you look like you're a little happy or you're a little okay with your life they immediately get jealous some people not everybody some people are genuinely happy to see their friends happy but others they look at you if you just look one second better than them immediately they had your bitter for no good reason so that's the heart of man the heart of man is desperately wicked who can know it we can only be careful we can only watch out for ourselves if somebody is not like your day one your tight friend that you consider as a sister if somebody is not your direct family, just be careful with the way you hang out with them. So unfortunately, Linda has lost her life. And we have a second poison story. We have a young Cameroonian man who left from Algeria. People are like, yes, so Algeria, oh, now the person own bush that way for. He fell bush for Algeria. <laughs> Hear me say he fell bush. He fell bush in Algeria. He went to Algeria and came back to Cameroon. And, you know, same hanging out with friends. I don't know what is happening. Every time you come, you want to see your people. You want to see your friends. You miss them. You've not seen them for a long time. You want to catch up and say hi how have you guys been what's been going on i mean what's popping so the poor guy came from algeria and i own bush that way follow came to algeria came and called his friends like you guys should come let's hang out in the evening he was buying drinks and everything now so they play me fast one on this boy dropped something in his drink and you know he died that's the same story we're having from Cameroon over and over again. You know the case of Karen Nollis, you know the case of so many people. So it's really getting crazy. Dear certain youths, dear Cameroonian youths, dear fellow human beings, who's on I take heart for poison person? Eh? Who's on I take heart for, for do evil for other people than me? Don't you guys have consciences? This is terrible. And this is becoming like rampant in Cameroon right now, day after day, case after case. We are all tired. Can we all change? Can we all go to God and pray? God, I don't want to envy what my neighbor has god i don't want to be jealous because my friend is winning god i am genuinely happy for my brother who is opening his business today god i'm genuinely happy for my cousin who is winning in life god as i have done it for my cousin do it for me too can we pray like this can we take hatred and jealousy away from our hearts can we pray like this too so good things can continue happening to us they say when God is blessing your friends, it means blessings is in the neighborhood. When God is blessing your family members, it means blessings in the neighborhood. That's when you have to key into the blessings, tap into the blessings, tap into it and pray. Father, as you did it for my brother, do it for me. Father, as you did it for my cousin, my neighbor, my classmate, do it for me. It is possible. Dreams are valid. Keep your dreams and you walk towards them and God is going to bless every little hustle you make. Instead of hating on people, the amount of energy you spend hating on people, if you don't spend that amount of time to think, to plan your own life, to devise a strategy. Don't you see that you two will be succeeding? I mean, the number of time that Linda's friends spend together, calling her, planning, calling her, Lee, come and hang out with us. Lee, come and eat with us. Lee, they plan, and they went and got the poison. All that time, so, all those hours they spend together. If they be shut down together, decide to form business together, that business is not for blue. If they be shut down together, so put money together, decide to establish some solid thing, that's enough to expand. Instead, they decided to use their time to plan evil against their fellow girl, and it's just unfortunate. So, you can see more and more poisoning stories by the day. We should watch out for ourselves. Watch your 6, watch your 9, watch your 12. So, moving now, we're going to talk about the third topic from Cameroon. The third hardest news we have from Cameroon, unfortunately, is a sad one. We have a young Cameroonian guy called Darrell, and Darrell's nickname, his popular name is called Path Money. Path Money who drowned over the weekend in Limbe. So, Darrell went out with some friends there. At Saben Beach in Limbe and they were swimming and all that stuff unfortunately water carried him away and that's how he drowned and he died so as the news broke that Darrell is dead people started coming now we know that boy known as Kama now you don't go take bad money for some place they don't knock his water he don't die other people came out to say now village people know his village people were haunting him so there's been all kinds of stories on the internet about um, Darrell's death but before we start calling village people I'd like for us to use more common sense here it's not everything that is mysterious it's not everything that is witchcraft it's not everything that is family as we say in Cameroon sometimes some things are just natural for example during the rainy season you know water is flowing all the time the river banks are flooding you know I know this because I'm a July baby I was born during the heart of the rainy season so July August September this is when we have the dire rainy season in Cameroon and the river banks are flooding the waves are high the tides are high and that's not the best time for you to go swimming it's risky by default it's risky by nature that's not the right time for you to go swimming and if you're going to swim at that time you should be very very 
very good at swimming. If you insist on swimming when the tides are high, you should be a very good swimmer. You cannot be an okay swimmer, a mediocre swimmer with your small Cartier swimming lesson that you went and learned. You want to carry it to the high sea. You want to carry it to a bigger body of water during the rainy season. That's risky. So you're risking your life. And when something happens to you, when dangerous things happen to you, they're going to start calling village people. Sometimes village people are even innocent too. <laughs> innocent village people sometimes village people are innocent and we keep calling their names sometimes we bring these things upon ourselves so there's multiple theories about Darrell's death today Power of money people are coming to say he was he was struck you know by one of the scamming victims they used formula on him other people are saying that no it's his village people and other stuff but i highly think it was natural so you to want to watch out for ourselves and our safety make sure you're not going out to swim when you know the river banks are flooding and all that stuff it's risky for you so daryl's body also drowned and disappeared they were looking for it everywhere and it's just two days ago that they found his body and was already decomposed and you can see it's such a sad and unfortunate way to leave the world that you're going to be having a, a closed casket funeral people are not going to be able to even see you and say goodbye to you and all that stuff it's just unfortunate so we want to make sure we are being safe stay safe out there now we're going to move on to the next topic all right so our first few stories have been a little sad let's move on to something a little funny so we have a Gabonese man we have this guy from Gabon he was like I'm a dumb for quad I have money I'm a big boy I can carry as many babies as I want so uncle went and carried four women no four wives and he got married to them on on the same day I mean most polygamies that we know most polygamies that we know they take one wife at a time some of them will start with one wife and then after four five years they bring a second wife after another three years they bring a third wife and maybe after like five six years they bring a fourth wife for where uncle was like when I know me when I know me my energy level <laughs> hey I can do four bases at once so so uncle can carry four women at once he got married to them and then the pictures went viral everybody on the internet was like child uncle you get hurt to not be high blood this because when you marry only one wife sometimes one wife can give you trouble trouble in this life if you marry wrong you marry the wrong woman or a woman who does not love you or a woman who is naturally problematic you are in trouble and then imagine somebody who has four not only will the four women be giving you trouble, the four women will be giving trouble amongst themselves. When the four women start having kids, the kids start fighting amongst themselves. Who is going to be your favorite wife? Who is going to be your favorite child? There's a lot of intricacies like, Uncle, hey, you shall say be ready for what you don't enter inside. So, uh, as you make your bed, so shall you lie on it. If you don't decide, say, you feel handle for, okay, oh. But most of us on the internet were just laughing when we saw this video like, child, Uncle, you get her to four wives at once. I mean, how is the honeymoon going to be like? Are you going to take all four wives with you fly them to Hawaii or wherever you're going for honeymoon how is that going to play like we're just curious who is going to be in the room with you on night one who is going to be in the room with you on night two or night three night four and why because if we are four of us we are four wives and then you pick my co-wife to start honeymoon with you I'm definitely going to feel some type of way I'm going to feel like okay he likes that one more than me he wants to start honeymoon with her obviously she's more special to him than me I'm going to feel bad so uncle Yawahala no it will start from day one you will confirm code your wives are going to team up against you and then you're going to run and leave the house so it's just funny you guys know polygamy is legal in certain african countries in cameroon for example in gabon too so you have the right to choose when you're getting married if you want to have like a monogamous marriage or a polygamous marriage for a polygamous marriage your spouses have to agree and his four wives gave their consent and they appeared in court on the day of the wedding and they signed polygamy all four of them at once jesus is lord so i'm just here stressed for a brother thinking about him like wondering if he's going to be safe wondering how his mental health and his sanity whether it's going to be intact in that house but hey he's trying to show us that he's a big boy he got money and the women look happy if you see them they are dressed well i mean obviously he has money the wedding gowns are not easy those are expensive wedding gowns i mean so obviously he can handle his business financially i don't know about when the kids start coming imagine if every wife has four kids that's 16 kids now today you go confirm say a long handle reach for 12. so yeah sometimes i prefer people who are open with their um their lifestyles people say the truth he has owned up to himself he knows that he loves polygamy so he knows that he lost many women and he has said okay i'm gonna be a polygamist i like a guy who is straightforward i mean he lets you know from day one not the ones who come and claim cheating what's that me i'm a holy guy i'm a christian i'm never gonna cheat on you i'm never even gonna look at another woman's bum bum but if you go and find out what they do behind your back 
if you go and find out what they do behind closed doors they are the highest chase the highest flirts the highest adulterous men so i like a man who is straightforward who says it as it is who tells you from day one baby my daddy was a polygamist eh my father was an igwe so it means i'm going to follow my daddy's footsteps i'm going to have six wives i'm going to have five wives so that way you know before stepping into the marriage you know that there's going to be other co-wives not the one who promises you heaven and earth and before you know he has side chicks north east west and south it's just crazy so yeah that's the story from this gabonese guy and it was funny let me know what you think about it in the comment section below we're going to move over to the next topic so the next topic is going to be about Tenno, the Cameroonian artist. Tenno was involved in an accident like three weeks ago over there in Douala at Fe Rouge Besenge. And unfortunately during this accident, a young lady, Erika Fia Muyong, Erika lost her life. Erika was sitting behind and um, Tenno was the one driving and Tenno had a friend so in front of him. So there were three of them in the car. Unfortunately, Erika was the one who died and you know, Erika was buried over the weekend in her village over there in the um, department of Noon. That's where Erika is from. So the next couple of weeks are really going to be difficult for Carmonia Addis Tenno because we have Erica's dad who is still so frustrated, still so mad. He cannot understand how his daughter lost her life because of negligence, because of, um, you know, carelessness, because of drunk driving. So, you know, Erica's dad has pressed charges and Tenno has been arrested. Tenno is currently in jail awaiting trial. So Erica's dad is angry and he has pressed charges for involuntary manslaughter. He has pressed charges for drunk driving resulting in his daughter's death so the next couple of weeks will be difficult for Tenno he's going to go to court there's going to be a whole legal proceeding and all that stuff when he's sentenced I'm going to come back and give you guys the news on the sentencing how many years imprisonment I'm going to come back and tell you guys if he has been asked to pay money in damages he's going to pay that you guys know Erica's dad is asking for money as well you know he has spent all these years raising his daughter so he definitely wants damages for losing his daughter this way so they're going to go to court and you know how much they ask him to pay how many million and all that stuff I'm going to come back and give you guys the news later on so Cameroonians are coming out to say ah ah papa accident they happen every day now why you take them personally so the law is the law the law is saying that whosoever causes harm and another due to their own negligence is going to be punished and that is punishable by section 289 of the Cameroonian penal code so if Erica's dad wants to do that it's up to him. He's going to be backed by the Lord. Tenno was driving and he was drunk, allegedly. So, I mean, he has the right to do that. You know, when the Eric Cafes of died, the dad was so mad. He was asking for bright price. He said, Tenno should come and pay a bright price. That Tenno should not just play with him. That day, Bamon people, they don't play with bright price. Tenno will come and pay dowry for the daughter who is dead and all that stuff. But now he has graduated from bright price to a whole legal proceeding. So, we are going to keep tabs on that case. Obviously, daddy wants to be, um, you know, compensated one way or the other. The daughter is dead. The daughter is gone, unfortunately but he does not just want to count it all as a loss maybe he wants um justice to be served and maybe he wants a little bit of damages from that and you know um i'm going to keep that on the case whatever happens i'm going to come back and give you guys the gist so the next topic may shock you a little bit um stay tuned we got you covered if you've always been wondering how a stripper's funeral will go down i have the gist for you guys today you know when a professional footballer dies everybody gathers at the soccer field they play a soccer match they play a football match um in me in honor of this person's men memory in honor of what this person was doing when he was alive so this time around a stripper has died and her friends have gathered to show just what she was doing when she was alive so when i watched the funeral i was like it was a little strange to me it's my first time to see something like that the lady's coffin is really lying there like sitting there like that her body is present in there even though it's covered and then her friends are wearing like bras and panties and they are really twerking and stuff in front of her coffin i found that a little funny but it's okay all methods of grieving are valid all methods of expressing pain are valid we cannot say oh because i cry like this somebody else should cry like that you don't know how they express their pain so all methods of grieving are valid i watched the video it was a little funny to me and i thought i had to share that with you guys today if you've ever wondered how a funeral's um a stripper's funeral will go down here is the video I'm going to put it here on the screen. You guys are going to see that video for yourself. And your jaws are going to drop to the floor like, what? It was a little interesting and I had to share that with you guys. Alright, so with this, I guess we've come to the end of today's video, guys. I remain your girl, Nana. If it is your first time on this channel, honey, 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 go ahead and subscribe because you would definitely love it here. On this channel, we talk all things entertainment. We talk about um, African recipes and we do lifestyle. So please go ahead and subscribe. You will absolutely love it here. And equally, let me know what you think about today's topic, all the topics discussed. What you think about the pastor and his wife maltreating that young boy that went and got from the village? What you think about that young guy in uh, Moliko was doing? 
doing things to his little sisters what do you think about the girl who was poisoned Linda who came from Europe what do you think about the guy who came from Algeria who was poisoned what do you think about the Gabonese man who had four wives on the same day all right so I guess we're coming to the end of today's video don't forget to leave me comments below in the comment section tell me what you think about all the topics discussed I'll be reading every single comment I'll be liking and replying your comments don't forget to like the video guys don't forget to share with your friends and family so we can have a community talking about these topics and don't forget to subscribe most importantly if you're new here subscribe and turn your notification bell on that way you're notified every time we post a new video i love you guys stay safe everybody i'll see you guys next time goodbye